Hey guys, um, when I built this, these systems, I made a lot of assumptions. Today we're gonna test them out and see what I need to do for next year. All right, stay tuned. All right, so here we are. So just to give you a little bit of uh, an update here. If you recall last time, these are the seeds that made it out of the last good batch I had. So if you recall, I had uh, my two um, my two green one. I was telling you I had four of those um, red sails. Um, I actually screwed one up uh, when I moved it. I actually tore it out of the um, of the media that it was growing in, which is one of the things we'll discuss today. And this is the sole survivor from the next batch after that, that did not take. So, um, so let's put them, the new guys, we're gonna take them, put them in here and uh, let's start there. Hey guys, well, look at this. We have some success here. The first time, um, the first time in a little while here. Uh, so yeah, so I had, uh, since my last video, I didn't have much to tell you here. We actually threw away a whole batch of those, but now temperature's been going down a little bit. They're um, actually germinating. So let's go put them in the greenhouse. And All right, so I have seven new seedlings here. I'm gonna put in there. Uh, one of the things that I've stopped doing is put them in the uh, initial nursery ones, you know, that are much closer together. And the reason I stopped doing that is because I actually uh, lost a few plants moving them over to, to this growth rot, which has more, uh, more uh, room for the seedlings to grow, you know? And uh, yeah, that's kind of a bummer to, uh, to transplant them and lose them in the transplantation phase, right? So, so I stopped doing that. So one of the things that I'm gonna do next year is remove the uh, nursery one and just use the ones that are spaced, you know, to do that. Because at the end of the day, I'm not a nursery. I'm not growing this in a quantity that makes sense for me to basically have a small setup, you know, and then a bigger one. So just doing that for food, so. So yeah, that's gonna be what we do. All right, just gonna put that in here so that I can put the last two. All right. Here we go, all good. This guy, I don't know if I should give it a chance. Maybe I should. Let me just push that down a little bit. And I'm gonna take a chance that this guy's gonna survive, but we will see. All right, that's for that, new seedlings in. Assumption number one, algae. Um, did I do a good job controlling algae? So a couple of things we did, right? Uh, these just aluminum flashing here that are covering unused uh, section of the, of the trough here. You know, just to tell you if they work here, let me bring you a little closer here so that we can actually. All right, let's look at this. Algaes. So this, these I just put in, all right? So I just took the um, everything out. And as you can see, it is very, very clear in there. All right, so, and the re how you can kind of see that, you see this here? How this one is completely covered. This one wasn't, but you know, it's maybe a little bit older. So that's how it gets. But if we go into this old one, right? And we go further down its, its area here where I do have them covered, as you can see, this is absolutely clear. There's like no algae whatsoever. You can see more air, but you know, when these things are on, it actually is doing what it's supposed to do, you know, preventing algae from growing. 
Second thing that I did, if you recall, is those buckets being black. This is end of the growing season, and if you can look at this, yeah, there's a little bit of it, but nothing, nothing compared to what I had last year. Last year, they were, you know, the green we just saw in the NFT trot, that was all over this, all right? And if I look in here, when you go into it a little bit, now you see nice roots here, right? You know, you would have algae right there growing, you know, the, the, the bucket would be, would be all black, but, you know, well, green actually. But, so this is all clean. So I am not going to put another bucket in here unless it's black. That essentially is the moral of that story, all right? All right, another assumption I made is with those uh, nursery trough, we call them, all right? So essentially, the ones that are spaced every uh, four inches, all right? Because, you know, you watch some YouTube video and they tell you, you know, they, they put all the seedlings uh, coming out of, uh, I'm pointing to my new ones, uh, coming out of the, um, uh, the grow lights here and put them into basically a staging area, those little close by because they don't take that much space and, you know, things go. That might be fine for um, commercial uh, nursery, but for me, what I found is that I, I, I've been, I have killed uh, plants before transferring them into the big trough. And since, um, since I can't, um, I can't have as much production as they do. I mean, it's just, just too much food. Um, there's no sense in me putting them in this crowded area, moving them and running the risk of um, killing them, especially since I have enough of a growing throt, you know, to just place them directly in it, like we did with, with these ones, all right? So I'm probably getting rid of this one next year, okay? And I'm thinking too that I have too much with four. I think I'm gonna just do three, move that, move either these three over there or you know, we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but uh, I'll keep you posted on, on my evolution here. All right, and you know, if you've been following my, uh, my story here, uh, I've had a lot of issue making those uh, lettuce germinate in the middle of summer because it was just way too warm, all right? So that's what you kind of see here. What I didn't do is harvest the, because you know, normally what I would do, I would come in and harvest the whole head of lettuce and, and that's what we'd consume. Since I had so much trouble with them, I let them be, all right? So essentially, as you can see, there's basically this big, long stem, right? And that's fine, because what I'm doing is I'm, and, and you know, I did harvest a few already, but what I do is that I just take the leaves off, you know, and I, le and I let it be. So it keeps producing leaves over that longish type of, <laughs> you know, which is definitely not what this lettuce should be like, but at least I keep growing lettuce when I couldn't make anything germinate, which has been a good thing. Um, that's the second assumption. I overestimated way too uh, my system. You know, it's too big basically for a household um, to consume. All right. Another assumption that I made, and one of you called me on that in, in a comment, was that maybe I'm having trouble with the lettuce because the temperature of the um, nutrient solution is too warm, all right? Let's measure that. So I have a thermometer here, all right? So this is my nutrient solution for my NFT system. And what we'll do, we'll go and measure the one for this system, which is underground, okay? Uh, my assumption was that that one would be much uh, cooler than this one, all right? And, you know, that just seemed like common sense, but there's nothing like data, right? <laughs> so. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna remove this here. All right, just open it up. All right, just enough so I can get to the liquid here because I'm not gonna maintain this today. All right, so this is my reference thermometer from my brewery, so, okay? So it's telling me right now that it's 81 in here, okay? So let's figure out what the liquid's at. Yeah, 76.2, because uh, the thing started moving back up. All right, 76.2 in, um, in this, in this uh, bin, which is just exposed to the element, all right? I'm gonna go over here. 
this is the one that's in ground there, right? That is my ebb and flow system. 71.3 guys. So there's a good difference of five degrees in between and I'm not doing anything with this except leaving it in the ground there, right? So can we say there's a difference between the two um, and that could contribute to how well it performs? I don't know. Five degrees is not a whole lot, I think, um, you know? So, so I think my assumption about leaving it uh, in ground that it would be lower, I think is right. Is it significant five degree? I don't know, okay? Uh, obviously this isn't the hottest day of the year. I mean, we're, uh, what is it? September 10th today, Saturday. So yeah, it's not, uh, it's not a huge thing okay it's it's about it's about 80 outside yeah anyway um, one of the thing with this uh, big thing another one of you commented on it maybe I could try to put it on wheels so that it's less less of a problem wrangling it around uh, I tried all right the thing is, is that this is soil right so I can't put wheel under it it would have to be in one some kind of carriage coming out and it would be in the way here so we are definitely going to do something with that during the winter uh, and it probably is going to go the road of another in-ground uh, tank here. But before I do that, I want to reconfigure based on my need here, what I'm going to do here. Because I think if I don't use the full length of the greenhouse, I can grow something else, you know, in half, in half of that side. All right. Yeah. So that's for the temperature assumption. It definitely affects the seeds. That that. There's no uh, mistake about that, but I don't know about the growing solution. All right. All right. Another assumption I told you when uh, I was talking about the uh, uh, dirt bucket versus these. Remember, I told you that there would be uh, there was roots growing inside uh, the tube and that would prevent it. It's not happening or not to the same extent in this system. So that's an assumption that I think is verified all right because i was telling you that i'd probably go bigger than this if i was going to do another dutch bucket um, but in this ebb and flow system the roots because they get flooded back and break down they're not always you know uh, kind of directed by the current to come out this hole all right so i think it's it's a good assumption all right and half inch is perfectly fine to do this system there we go these trough modification I had to do since I built them and, and we did our last update. Uh, you can see up here in the picture. I had to glue um, some downspout uh, redirector, you know, kind of what's at the bottom of one of those regular downspout because, I mean, they made for it, so might as well use them. Um, I glued them up at the end of the trough. Uh, what I realized uh, and that happened because there was some leakage on the ground and I figured it that way, all right, is that the, even though I have a, um, a slope going down, right, when I have a lot of good plants, like earlier when I had a lot of mature plants uh, kind of all, all in line, the root ball takes a lot of space. And what happens is that it, it blocks the flow, the liquid goes up in the trough. I mean, usually it's not a problem, but... What ended up happening at the end is that they weren't sealed. So if the level got to uh, to the end and, and basically overflew, it would start dripping. All right. And uh, that's not great. So I had to glue these things down to get everything together. Could I have done other things? Yeah, I could have probably, um, you know, took a heat gun like I did over here, you know, and tried to get it up. But I had them. So I just put them in place with some uh, vinyl glue. Uh, no big deal it's holding fine so that's one of the mods i did and obviously those algae um, uh, covers there also worked really really well um, other than that uh, you know i put this disassembling uh, piece over here that union uh, for, so that i can undo that and and take it out like i said this system here it's not working it's just when it's full of liquid it's just too heavy to put back in place so that's why you see it's a little bit sunk in because every time i would put it in it would push some dirt around and basically make a hole for itself uh so 
I'm I have to rethink this whole situation here. Um, other than that, um, other than that, don't use clear uh, clear tubing. Let me just turn you around here so you can see what I'm talking about. Because these things need constant, constant uh, maintenance. I need to clear them from algae all the time. Because, I mean, obviously, same reason I put those uh, aluminum uh, shields on. These things have nothing. Algae is growing unimpeded in there. And so it, 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 it's a mess. All right. So I'm going to have to figure something out for the feeds here. And I'm probably going to figure something out to control them as well, where I can turn one off. Because I think it's pretty important when not a full system. Yeah, you see, there they go. They just started. Um, I think it's pretty important that you're able to not run solution in an empty trough. Because all it does, it's, it grows algae, right? So um, I'm going to rethink that, that whole situation here. All right, so stay tuned for that. That should be interesting. Other than that, guys, you know, this system I'm not going to touch. Like I said, you know, it's doing everything I needed to do. This is the second um, second big harvest coming up here um, of, of, of those tomatoes. You know, I, I had to pare it down because it just became unsustainable. It was it was over everybody. So this is going to remain untouched. Um, I will, though think about putting another system uh, to grow uh, probably uh, peppers because I will admit that um, and I'll sh some pictures around here from last year the peppers were amazing how they grew in there um, and they're not doing super hot in the garden so I'm thinking about bringing them back here if I can find a solution for you know how I'm gonna deal with this whole thing and I will find a solution it's just a matter of thinking about it a little bit have plenty of time all right uh, yeah so this has been a while since we talked I hope you uh, like my update here and um, we'll see you next time all right thanks bye